Hi, this is the second video of basic rules that I'm going to try and demonstrate today. This one, the main skill we're going to try and learn is called a blind UI. Now, in general, we always actually have to existentially instantiate as fast as we can. But sometimes we're actually not able to because it's buried by a universal. So I'll show you what I mean in a second. Let's just set this up. Show not for all Y, not HY. Okay, now on line two, I can just get an ID and I have this. That's quite nice. Universals are very handy in general. Now, part of the moral of this question is to remind yourself never, ever, ever UI randomly unless you have guidance. Of course, the only exception is if you have something like this, in which case we have our existential right there, but it's buried by a universal. So what I need to do is I actually need to UI in order to access this blindly. So I have no idea what I'm going to UI to. It doesn't really matter. If it doesn't matter, I tend to just keep the variable on its own. I just UI to X here, and it's no big deal. Uh, you can actually UI to anything you want. Um, it really doesn't matter at all because we're just sort of guessing. And then now the goal of this was so I could actually EI all along. And so that's line 3 EI. Okay, so that's nice. Now I actually have something fixed, and um, you know that's just sort of sitting there. Okay, so I look at premise two. It's a biconditional, uh, and I realize I'm going to sort of need one of either side here. And then I look at this one, and this is uh, was well, just universal, universal. So it actually looks like the rest of the proof is pretty straightforward. But I'm going to show you a basic trick here. So I'm going to try and build this existential here. Uh, why? Because it will become the antecedent when I break this biconditional up, and then I can modus ponens, and the rest of the proof is very easy from there, as you should see. Uh, actually, there's lots of redundant parts of this proof, but it doesn't matter. So what I'm going to do is I realize that I actually want some G alpha uh, and F alpha. And these two need to be the same because I have to existentially generalize to the same variable. So if I look around, I actually have Fx and I have Gi. Uh, which is very close to this, but the problem is my variables here, x and i, aren't the same. Now, this is typically the case when we do a blind UI. I UI'd f to um, x, not knowing what I really wanted. So now I often will have to go back and re-UI, premise one, into something more useful. So now I'm going to UI to i. Oops. And that's, again, premise one UI. Now, of course, I need to access this, so I'm going to EI. And whenever I EI, I must EI to a brand new variable, 5 um, EI. Now, the point of all this is, in the end, I want matching F and G. And I got it. How did I get it? Because I UI premise one again to match the G I wanted. So all I need to do is rip these out. Well, I get GI from line 4, simplify, and I get FI from line 6, simplify. No problem. Of course, this lets me go straight to GI and FI, and that's line 7, 8, ADJ. And on line 10, I can existentially generalize this to whatever variable I want. I pick W. Oops, W. And that's 9, EG. EG. So the point of all this was that now I can split this up into this way, and I can immediately go like so, A-Y uh, or H-Y. How did I do that? I took 10, I took premise 2, by conditional to conditional, modus ponens. On line 12, I have an existential, I immediately instantiate. I cannot use I, I cannot use J, so I use K or H-K. Now, I finally have guidance on what to do with this premise and this line here. The guidance is straightforward. I just match. So uh, I'm going to match my A predicate, which over here is fixed to K. I'm now going to match it to K, and I get not A, K. That's premise 3, UI. And on line 14, I might as well just match my line 2, and I get not H, K, from 2 UI. Now generating the contradiction is a breeze. On line 15, say I'll modus to lend opponents these things and get HK. That's K. Uh, that's 12, 13, MTP. Uh, and then, well, 
I'll just say 14 I D. That takes care of, oh, I only had one shell line. Okay, that's the end of the proof. So some important steps from this one. The first is this demonstrates a blind UI where I had to UI something to get at the existential, and then I had to re-UI it to match to something useful. This is a sort of very common move, uh, and it's a nice little trick to know. Another sort of important thing is notice that I really resisted UIing line two and premise three until I knew what to match them to. Actually, if I UI too early, things are just gonna get really messy. Never UI first, always UI to match. Of course, this question demonstrates the one exception. Okay, give it a shot, good luck.